Coming to you direct from the nerve center of the galaxy's greatest comic. This is the 2000 AD Thrill Cars. Borakthung Athletes and welcome to the ultimate podcast of the galaxy's greatest comic where we're going ultimate this week as we talk to Pat Mills and Simon Bisley about 2080, the ultimate collection, everything's ultimate, um, which is uh, a brand new series which is launching this week. You may have seen some of the TV advertising already. No doubt you will have heard of or seen or are collecting the Judge Dredd Mega Collection from Hachette Partworks. Well, that has been fantastically successful. And so we are repeating that with uh, wider 2000 AD. 2000 AD, the ultimate collection from Hachette, uh, begins with Slain the Horned God, which is one of the all-time most popular stories 2000 AD has ever published. And uh, we're going to be talking to Pat and Simon about their work on this seminal and groundbreaking series back in the late 80s. And if you've not checked out the Ultimate Collection, then make sure you head along to 2000ADcollection.com where you'll be able to subscribe to this most Zar Jazz collection. And if you do subscribe now, then you get some absolutely gaffle bet extras, including, and we're very excited about these, uh, some um, premium subscription figures, which include Nemesis the Warlock, Judge Death, Halo Jones, Rogue Trooper, Nikolai Dante, and Judge Dread that look absolutely stunning. We've seen the prototypes in the office, so that's just next to £1.50 uh, per issue. But the first issue of the Ultimate Collection is just one ninety nine, and is available from all good news agents in the UK and Ireland. Now, as I said, The Horn God is one of those comics that everybody should own a copy of. It changed not just 2080, but comics as well, making a superstar out of Simon Bisley, sparking a revolution in uh, painted artwork in comics and uh, in mature storytelling, which continues to this day. So it's wonderful to be able to welcome uh, Simon Bisley into the 2080 Thrill Cast sound booth. Thank you. And uh, on Skype from uh, sunny Spain, Mr. Pat Mills. Hi. Hi. Excellent. Well, thanks very much, guys, for, for talking to us. Pat, I want to come to you first, um, because uh, Slain occupies a very interesting place in, in 2000 AD, in, in that uh, it, it's nominally a, a, a sci-fi comic, um, but this was its first... Proper foray into fantasy. Um, what was the what was your your reason behind uh, wanting to do a, a kind of sword and sorcery series? Um, well, there was nothing actually unusual about it. Um, uh, in fact, uh, there was a barbarian story. Uh, I think I wrote uh, originally for two thousand AD, which ended up in uh, Star Lord, uh, Planet of the Damned, and we had one or two. Um, uh, Future Shocks, I think, uh, by Steve Moore, uh, that featured barbarians. So uh, occasionally people would say, oh, um, uh, you know, why a barbarian in a sci-fi comic? And the answer is, uh, why not? Isn't it bloody obvious? <laughs> but uh, there you go. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I mean, it, 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 it's kind of uh, it, it, historically where Slain sits, you know, you, you, you'd had your sort of um, – the, the, the big uh, uh, Conan, uh, the popularity of Conan in, in, in the 70s and into the 80s. And, of course, you, you're starting to get into the age of uh, uh, where you have Dungeons and Dragons and, and, and a lot of, uh, uh, of, of, of films and TV and, 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 and books and whatnot. Um, Simon, for, for, for you, what, 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 what was the, the effect of seeing something like Slain? Well, picking up from what you said about Conan, yeah. as, as Pat knows, I was very, very much a Frazetta Conan fan yeah. background so it was a, an interesting dynamic between me and pat i was a very young rebellious age hmm. and i really like conan and frazetta whereas, whereas pat ray didn't and he was going for the more feminine side of things so yeah. but i think because the way we we kind of clashed in a way it kind of made a kind of a, a, a rhythm hmm. and a poetry to it which worked very well i think hmm. um i think um what were you talking about uh yeah i think the whole the whole idea of the, the celtic period of time is such a mystery to everybody Still, I yeah. mean, New York's don't hang everything else. There's nothing really written except more, more, you know, fantastical poetry. So yeah. it's fascinating for us, for everybody, at any period of, of age, as a grow. We mm. want to know about the Celtic world, and we don't know much about it. So uh, we can get it through this this kind of uh, material mm. that Pat's written. Pat, because it's based on historical, you know, elements as well. Yeah, as well absolutely. As well, that's something I wanted to ask Pat about. Actually, is is I is the, the the historical side of things that that you you you're, you're 
melding uh, the, the 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 research that you've done with more fantastical elements was it was it there was the balance of those two things there from the off as far as you were concerned? Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I, I sort of worked it out uh, even really before writing uh, episode one, and I and I think it's a really important thing because it gives it a a subtext and a reality uh, that otherwise, you know, it, it, it can end up as just a sort of hodgepodge of uh, fairly meaningless fantasy. You, you, yeah. you have to yeah. base these kind of stories on something. It has to have firm foundations. And, uh, um, and, and when you don't, <clears throat> uh, well, you get something like uh, Guy Ritchie's King Arthur, for example. It, that's that's a very interesting uh, e- example because I, I, it, it, the thing that about slain that all, has always struck me is that even when you've deviated from the path of of you know the, the actual myths and legends and historical figures, they're still there in the background. You're never ditching them completely, even when you you do something that's a bit more fantastical. It gives it more, a bit yeah, more realism, and, and yeah. you stick to, mm. and you stick to the uh, imagery. And I th- I think. Uh, that there's a coherence about it, particularly with um, Simon's version, which I, I, I think is really groundbreaking. And if, uh, if by comparison you look at, say, uh, King Arthur, um, the, I, I guess I'm mentioning it because I, I, I saw it yesterday, <laughs> and uh, there's, a, there's a real hodgepodge of different images in it. You know, it's not, it painful. hasn't got that painful cohesive. To look at. Mm, painful. You know, that, that slain is, is visually... Uh, coherent, and I think that's so important uh, that it should be. I think, I think because yeah, and I mean, you, I think uh, it becomes more reliable. It becomes more honest to to the viewer, and I think it's very very interesting what you say, Pat. Because yeah, you would be your eyes would be darting everywhere, and you'd be questioning that. I mean, first of all, you think, well, it looks like Star Wars to me. You know, Star Wars barbarian stories. Like, yeah. well, so it's always irritating. I find it incredibly irritating when you get these ridiculous swords. That aren't usable. They look like something out of heavy metal uh, uh, film or something, a heavy metal band hmm. kind of event. But I think it, it historically, yeah. I mean, I think in the future, people will refer to pro- hopefully probably Slain, Pat Slain, and hmm. look at it and think, well, this is the kind of weapons they use and this is the kind of people they were. Sure, you know? sure. Well, uh, uh, Pat, you, you, you mentioned there about the, the look of Slain um, uh, as, as being consistent. Because it, it's interesting how... The different artists who've worked on it, so people like you know Mick McMahon, uh, Angie, who, who who came up with the original look, um, uh, Glenn Fabry, Simon, uh, Simon Davis at the at the moment, and, and so many others, have taken those core elements that were laid down at the very beginning, done their own spin, but those those remain in place. Yeah, I, I think there's probably more freedom on Slain than there, there might be on Judge Dredd. Mm. And I think that's a freedom that the artists have taken anyway. Um, and I think uh, and I think that's a good thing. I mean, uh, for instance, I started off uh, with Slain and I thought, well, you know, who, who should be the, the, the bad boy to base him, him on? And at that time, it was Jack Nicholson. And progressively... Uh, the artists themselves <laughs> saw themselves as bad boys. So if you look uh, closely at uh, the Horn God, of course, you'll see Simon there as Slain. Oh, here I am. Uh, yeah. I'm a Batman as well, and Judge Dredd, if you look. <laughs> so are you, are, you, are you a bad boy, Simon? Oh, not at all. Not uh, you, no, you're angelic. It's just rumours. I'm, yeah. I'm a gentleman. I'm a lovely fellow. Entirely. Entirely. <laughs> Pat, um, in terms of, of approaching um, the Horn God as a reader... Now, uh, when when we talk to people at conventions, when 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 we talk to people online about the Horn God, some of them become quite reticent because they go, "Oh well, this is this is mid series. This isn't the beginning. Um, you know, I'm jumping into the story." And yet, the one thing that's really struck me about um, the Horn God is how immersed, very very quickly immersive it becomes. So even if you've never read a page of Slain in your life, which I hadn't when I first came across the Horn God, it it grabs you straight away. It, it draws you in. Yeah, it, it's because uh, there are various elements that have been set up in the uh, previous stories. So uh, the Horn God was definitely going to be the, the, the story I had to write. And then, uh, incredibly, Simon came along and he had the stamina and the endurance to do four volumes, which uh, um, w- would have been a real challenge for Glenn, I think. Mm. Uh, but it was always the story I wanted to do because... Um, it's a Celtic legend, and it's a, a Celtic legend that was that was crying out 
uh, to be dramatized. Mm. And and explain for the, for those who uh, who are listening who perhaps you know may have read the the, the Horn God or, or haven't read a lot of the back issue. Where, where is Slain at at this moment in time when the Horn God starts? Where where is he as a character? Well, <clears> he's <throat> he's returned to his tribe after lots of uh, fairly nefarious adventures. And he's become uh, slain the king. And this is the next challenge for him to unite the tribes of the earth goddess uh, against the uh, tribes of the Droon lords uh, who are ruled over by uh, the incredibly evil Lord Weird Slaufeg. There's a, a bit right at the beginning that I want to talk to. We, we, I want to come on in a moment to talking about how Simon came to be working on on uh, uh, on Horn God. But for me, one of the most affecting moments in all of 2000 AD that I've read is 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 that moment in the first few pages where you have uh, Uko as 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 the the narrator, and there's that wonderful panel where uh, he looks mournfully sort of at maybe just past the viewer and it says but he is gone from us now the the the, the pathos in that moment and that 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 for me is uh, you know the, the the thing that i referred to earlier where, where you know it drew me in the the pathos of that moment is what you're not alone in that Michael. Yeah, yeah you're not alone in that uh, i can remember readers at the time uh uh pointing that particular picture out and of course so much of that is down to simon bringing out the uh, the, the emotional potential in the words, the way that uh, Uncle looks towards us and says, and he has gone from us now. And, and uh, I felt a pang too. And in fact, I remember one reader... It's the way you wrote it, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote it, mate. <laughs> now I just interpret it, and I hope I did a good job on it, so I'm, oh, thanks for that. Yeah. Go on, sorry, go on. Uh, no, but I mean, it, it was so moving. And I remember one reader saying that, uh, you know, he'd lost someone um, close to him. And... and that particular picture um, struck struck a real chord with him, and uh, yeah, that that's uh, you know that for me is the whole essence of uh, of, of these wonderful uh, sword and sorcery stories of that ilk. You know, mm. I mean, I think if I was thinking of what would there be in film, it would probably be Excalibur mm. that has similar uh, has these similar strong emotions, mm. um, and, and so I think that's the thing that uh, both Simon and I. Um, we're, we're, we're really aiming for all the time, and uh, but, we never, but, we, but, we, but, we, but me and Pat never discussed that, right? We never right. ever discussed that. Mm. All me and Pat do is just laugh <laughs> when we're on the phone, we just continue to laugh about everything, yeah. But we seem to have this, uh, this sense where we can just, just, just our minds gel, we just we get we do it naturally, it comes together very well, and we, we, I interpret it how he's written it, yeah, and maybe take it somewhere else, but. There's an instinct there, that, and I think that Pat has that with a lot of other artists as well. It's just a just a, a interpretation of things. But well, I just say one thing quickly. Yeah, the reason why I use myself as a model because I'm there. <laughs> I get my shirt off, you know, I get my whole belly out, and I, I'm there all the time, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't think you're alone in that with uh, with comic book artists, to be honest <laughs> with you. Very handy. Well, I, I just want, Simon. I wanted to just talk Sorry, to you. I interrupted you, Pat. No, 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 I, no. I, I want to talk to you about that that uh, that moment of, of you know Uko saying he's gone from us now. Mm -hmm. That's one of the first pages yeah. of this of this strip, and yeah. and I mean, do you do you remember doing those early pages? I do remember, yeah, absolutely, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what talk us through your process and that? How how because to, to be so in sync with what Pat was writing well, from okay. the very beginning. Okay, well, it's first, quite it was, first it was fear <laughs> because I had no idea how to approach this because Glenn's Glenn's work and, and McMahon's was so was so magnificent. Mm. There's absolutely no way I could ink. I couldn't couldn't ink. Still can't. Very scratchy kind of effort. I thought, well, if I paint this, then uh, I know it's going to be magnificent. Mm. And I was very excited about working on it because I knew it was going to be good. This whole thing would be good. So I was excited about, about that. Um, the Uko image, maybe I lost my father. Here we go. But I lost my father. Not that, you know, so maybe that may have come across or maybe I could. I understood that kind of emotion of losing someone. Well, we do. We lose some, lose people. Mm. But um, I don't think, uh, I don't think Pat, Descri described uh, uh, um, like I was looking more for anything or maybe but I just he comes through more of a spiritual kind of channel mm. I know it sounds really like a hippie but <laughs> there is something we can understand that's not not said or read yeah. it just felt so I think uh, you know there's just some, I think a bit of soul or some spirit is there and that script just come, comes through and you can trans you can you can um, Interpret that, or it just comes through like uh, waves mm. of uh, energy. What am I talking about? <laughs> Holy Lord! <laughs> well, no, but no, I think, uh, I, but yeah. I think just that one line mm. 
that is a mournful line. That is, you know, yeah. a line full of pathos. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. As, as the artist, it, you yeah. just kind of riff off. It's that. like acting, Pat, isn't it? You, you, you're searching. You, you get come from. You grab from experience mm. what, you, what you can find there. But I think it's very well, very clever. It's very daring as well to just immediately have that like the, 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 all the sorrow at the beginning. Yeah. So you know this is going to be a fucking tragedy all the way down my throat. It's almost like Wuthering Heights or something. You know, mm. that kind of thing. You know, at the very beginning, it's all like all arguments and damnation and, and death and 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 the misery from the beginning. So you know it's going to be kind of there, but the high points are. Pat, there, there is a uh, all the way through the, the the Hong God. There is a great sense of of uh, what I I feel kind of uh, sadness because um, you know Slain has grown up as as you described. You know he's 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 united the 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 the, the, the tribes, um, and it's almost as if he's you know he's lamenting when li- uh, uh, lamenting the passing of a time when life was was simpler. Yeah, I, I think that's probably something we, we all feel probably when we're, say, teenagers or something, <laughs> and then uh, life catches up with us and we have to take on uh, the burdens of responsibility and so forth. And, and we look back to those carefree days, which in Slane's case were certainly quite uh, dubious and criminal. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of sadness there. But also, at the same time, uh, he has to have something that's driving him. In other words, what is it that motivates him uh, to do this? And um, uh, he's not um, he's not a fame whore. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of traditional heroes are. Uh, he, he's driven by this um, worship of the earth goddess. And once you get into that... Uh, you get into some quite deep territory. You know, it, it's quite a complex issue. And, uh, yeah, I, I always knew I had to deal with it. Uh, but I, I also, because after all, he's from the tribes of the Earth Goddess and the Celts uh, worship, or uh, there's a strong argument for saying that they worship the goddess primarily rather than, rather than the god. So I always knew I had to get into it. And I kind of, almost been putting it off until uh, the horn god and then i really had to go for it and kind of explain um something of the uh, of their matriarchal society so that provided the mo- the motivation for why he's doing these things i mean other- otherwise he would just be um well just another arrogant uh, dictator really <laughs> It's interesting you, you you mention arrogance there because there, there is another wonderful moment in in the Horn God when uh, Slain is talking to Mongan, I think, and and um, they're saying, you know, what, what what do we do? You're you're the you're the king. What 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 do we do next? And he turns to them and he says, I don't know. And he's got this extraordinary grin on his face of uh, I, I I don't know how to describe it. A, a kind of. Uh, 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 you know, a, a, a kind of he's almost laughing. He's like, "Well, how the hell am I supposed well, to know what to probably do?" Because, um, probably because probably because a star chasing Iggy, Iggy maniac drew it <laughs> and painted it. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm interested in that moment because the the having talked about how um, uh, with that moment with Uko at the beginning, the the text and the, the image had been uh, you know simpatico had been together. Mm. <clears throat> now you're you're reading into these lines something else you know the, 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 you really if he smiles a lot a lot could be said with that smile yeah so many things we ran into that mm. there's so many people do a stern straight for you know a serious face so we stern that he's thinking but it's a, a laugh it could be either fear mm. or confidence or a lot of other things you can read a lot into that you know so, it's, it's, so, uh, yeah. so basically what's my ploy and what i do is if i'm in doubt make someone smile <laughs> and they can look, uh, let's look at me, a really intellectual, clever artist. And actually, I'm just a hack. Really. Yeah, see, e- every hero <laughs> has to have a flaw. E- yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Other- otherwise, I mean, they're, they're mm. utterly dreary. Mm. And yeah, maybe, so, yeah. if you like the flaw or the, the, the fragile aspect of Slain, is uh, he's following this kind of uh, matriarchal system. A- and this means he doesn't always have uh, all the answers. Mm. And uh, the, the traditional. Um, hero always has the answers to everything and, and they can often be quite dreary as a result which is often why we we prefer villains to heroes <laughs> because we think oh at least they're human for god's sake you know yeah. so there's there's it, it was quite an interesting and and probably a slightly risky thing to do i suppose saying do you know what i haven't got a clue what i'm going to do next because 
you know, you look at the, the majority of action movies, the, the hero is always so full on. He always knows what the hell he's doing. And uh, and there are many situations where, where, you know, whatever any of us are doing in life, we think, for God's sake, I haven't a clue what I'm going to do. <laughs> so he probably just laughed with embarrassment, I suppose, didn't he? <laughs> Maybe like embarrassed by the artist, he didn't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he's young and he's just full of full of energy. And all this crap, you know, he's, he's driven force, isn't he? Mm. So maybe questions like that are just too complicated, or, or something he's not bothered about. Well, but it, it, why you know, when, when, he could be concerned with that when he was when he was younger. You know, yeah. every answer, every question could be answered with the blade of his axe. Yeah. yeah. Whereas when he's king, all of a sudden it's not as simple as that. Burden, yeah. The, the burden of responsibility, then. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I wonder if he cared about responsibility. Did he ever care? Or did he care concerned with that? You know. I don't know. Ask Pat. I don't know. No, I don't, well, no, I'll just say, would, would he be concerned with it anyway, regardless? Would he be concerned about well, As king, was he... Mind you, I've not read it. Maybe I should read it, Pat. I'll, I'll, so I'll, I'll, I'll bother you with that. I'll move along. Well, I, I, think, I think the thing is, once you get into this um, uh, complex society, it, it raises interesting challenges for the, for the hero, and he doesn't have to be just a straightforward hack-and-slay chap. And, and I think that's... That's the real fun of Slain and also the, the challenge of uh, sustaining it all the way through to today, finding new ways of um, uh, keeping him very human and interesting rather, rather than predictable. Mm. And, of course, the, the inspiration for that ultimately are the Celts because if you read any of their legends, they're, they're so different to the uh, the Nordic or the Roman or, or the uh, or the Greek legends, um, there are much more uh, complex and, and I think more interesting. Um, and they didn't fear dying, did they? Is that true, Pat? They didn't fear dying, obviously. Say again? No, they have no fear of death. In the, in the light, in the, yeah. they, they 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 appear not to, and yeah. I mean, some of their some of their habits are so strange that mm. you can't really relate to them today. You yeah. know, they are. Uh, I mean. Charging into ba battle, start naked. I mean, you know, that's, that's it's an, pretty strange. It's an, it's, an it's an intimidation thing, though. I mean, it's just to show intimidate the, the the people you're fighting. Think, oh my God, he's naked. He's a he must be out of his mind. <laughs> so it's it's a lot of a lot of battles are psychological, and it's psychological to begin with. And it's so you know you can you can lose at the very beginning. I was interested, just going to ask you one question, Pat. Have you ever considered actually writing a book of of, of the Celts and the, and the history of them? And all the mythologies and everything else, and have that illustrated, and I draw I, it. I haven't really. Um, <laughs> really I, I, like as a historian, I do, I do it as a professor and as, and as such, educationally. Yeah, still. I, I, you should. I, I think if there was something new that I could uh, bring to the table, mm. uh, possibly one or two insights. Yeah. But I, I have to really think if I had a new angle. Mm. Uh, in other mm. words, I wasn't mm. just recycling mm. uh, what was already uh, known, but. Uh, it's a tempting proposition, but mm. on that subject, uh, Simon, it, it mm. brings, as you were saying about the, uh, you know, charging into battle mm. naked and, yeah. uh, and intimidating, it reminds me that when we were doing the, um, the Horn God, I mean, you actually had a lot of insights into some of these strange warrior uh, customs mm. and practices, mm. uh, and one that springs to mind is uh, throwing the spear, the gay bolga, from his foot mm. and I had no idea myself how that was possible and, and you I think perhaps because of your martial arts background uh you you explain that to me yeah well yeah well, yeah yeah because yeah. as you come as you as you're forced back you can roll back it's like a, like a leopard goes to it goes to ground and then it, it strikes out with his with his hind legs and disembowels its attacker in effect plus you're a target on the floor you don't expect to suddenly go to the floor and where they're throwing spears at you, you're on the floor, and then the spears come up at you. The gay ball comes at you. But yeah, yeah. yeah. and I, I, I think there were one or two other occasions in the series where we, we would talk things through, and uh, I, I think you had some interesting insights, and, uh, um, you know, it, um, I think it really added something to the to the whole saga. <laughs> Thanks. Let, let, let's let's very talk, kind, Pat. Very, very kind, sir. Let's talk a little bit about how... Um, we actually came to this point that, that, that Simon was working on the Horn God because you'd worked together on ABC oh, Warriors. This one. Yeah, by all means, you come together on the ABC Warriors Black Hole. Yeah, yeah. So how how Simon did you come, end up coming on to explain the Horn God? I let Pat finish this one up, but uh, just because I think it's kind of cool, <clears throat> what Pat said to me was he, he saw Hammerstein for the ABC Warriors, which is the first thing I illustrated with Pat the, uh, the ABC Warriors saga, and I did an image of um, Hammerstein walking through a field. 
um, with butterflies and fl- flowers flying around him and things like that. And I think Pat recognised that as something that uh, sparked off uh, an interest in me doing slang. Is that true, Pat? I think maybe. Uh, quite possibly, yes. That, that does ring <laughs> a bell. Uh, well, no, I, what, what it was I, a long time I, ago. <laughs> no, what I remember was uh, I, I think I think you were saying how uh, you, you would really fancy doing Slain at some point, yep. and uh, I, I think purely uh, you know o- o- off your own bat, you you produced this wonderful. Um, I think it was more a spread. Of um, which I think ultimately ended up as a as a cover or something, uh, and, and you had uh, the, the the Celtic look was really right and, and mm. everything, and it was just I was really blown away by that image. Mm. Pat, you ref- you referred to the Horn God as being the story that, that that you needed to write. Is it is it something that that um, seeing. Simon's artwork it, it spurred you into that, that that you knew you had to do it you saw the right artist and you seized the moment is that is that kind of what happened not entirely because the the, the story I knew I had to do this story it was the next one in the line right. and then along comes Simon and the 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 opportunity was the fact that rather than it perhaps being told piecemeal uh, because uh, I mean, we're talking about a four-volume saga, mm. and uh, Glenn uh, is a fantastic artist, but not a fast one. Uh, and in fact, he was slowing down all the time uh, as we got to this point. Uh, uh, probably, I think, because by then, I think he was getting um, uh, cover offers elsewhere and, and so forth. So I, I always had this story in my mind, uh, but it's then, ah, well, I can, I can really bring it together now. Um, you know, if, if it had been, say, um, uh, a year or so later, um, it could well have been, I could turn around to Simon and said, well, actually, um, it will be where Slain uh, travels in time because uh, I, I really want to do the Boudicca saga, um, which, is, which is the next one that... Uh, um, that, that comes along after the the horn god. So it was it was the way the cards fell, really. Mm. Mm. Can I add something? Yeah, sure. Just generally about. I mean, if any budding artists out there, it's worth looking at because you can see how myself as an artist learnt how to paint and how my style progressed and egressed. Mm. And also, you see the influences there. Um, I'm very. I, I leave it very, very bare and naked. How the process came about you can see the inks of pencils how i laid the brown washes on and how i molded uh, layers on top and, and different textures and different techniques so if any artist wants to look on purely the grounds of how to paint then not just the only way to paint but it's always good to refer to that in, in that respect let's talk a little bit about your, your decision to fully paint mm. um was that something that, that you consulted pat on or editorial or did you did you decide that was how you're going to do it i can't remember i can't remember okay. i must have talked to pat at some point say i suggested i, I paint it um, oh, I think we're all thrilled, and I think you. Mm-hmm. I think uh, the printing um, process had only relatively recently uh, allowed us to do um, full, fully painted uh, mm-hmm. strips. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Instinctively, it was a way to go for me because, again, Glenn Fabry's, and actually, he's not. He's not really actually a slow artist. He is very quick. He's extremely fast, but he chooses. He's, so, he's a more of a perfectionist. Yeah, and wants to get everything right. Um, but uh, no, he was going to kick my ass completely, hundred percent. He still does kick kick my ass as, as far as his, his work goes, and so uh, the painting was the only way to go. I mean, it, I mean, maybe that's just instinct thing as well. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about the evolution of that because you know, flicking through uh, the Horn God now. No, because I was very uh, competitive, extremely right, competitive, okay. and young and full of spunk. <laughs> permanent direction I had to get this you know everyone's I would compete against everybody I was at war with everyone so I had to beat them this is the only way I could do it how old were you when you did the horn god I was in my 20s pal wasn't I must have been early late 20s uh, I guess yeah 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 so, so lots of vim and vigor. Mm. Uh, You've seen a picture yeah. of the back, you know, the original copies of the book yeah yeah, yeah. you seen how, how young I look yeah and Pat looks just the same now doesn't he <laughs> he hardly looks any different I think you go in a cauldron Pat get him out you know you young again this man. <laughs> is your vitality and, 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 and youth of, 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 of character and, and, and so what's wonderful about Pat he's just so full of life and always always wants to you know always absorbs and is always interested in whatever else has, has to has to say about things he's never been egotistical which has been great that's why it's always wonderful to work with Pat mm. he's open to it open to everything open to suggestions and there's no ego there or is there Pat I don't know <laughs> no I know it no it's wonderful to work with Pat in that respect I mean to me I mean a lot of the time I mean I'll paint it I want to impress Pat 
Mm. You know, I was painting for him and painting for other artists as well. I was really wanted to impress. It was mm. very exciting mm. uh, Sounds, yeah. seeing some of the scenes, and uh, and we mustn't overlook the fact that you suggested a couple of uh, uh, key scenes. Uh, one was uh, the, the the scene where May visits uh, the Lord Weird Slough Fig in yeah. his cave, uh, and I, I I remember talking it through with you, and then you were adding uh, different ideas there. And also, there's another favorite scene of mine where uh, Akko follows Maeve's dwarf through the alleyways. Uh, uh, and that is just, uh, your pacing on that is, is superb. <clears throat> that was pure fluke. Yeah. Some of the worst couple of storytelling on the planet. So that was, that was fluky. I think it's interesting because my father said he watched a movie called, uh, was it Don't Look Back or something? With, uh, and it was, he was really chasing a little dwarf through, uh, through the alleyways and things. And that kind of... But I had never seen the seen the film. But my mother, my father described it as a quite a horrible bit of, in a movie when the child, the, kid, the dwarf turns around and it's like a he thinks it's his child, his, his kid. Yeah. He's chasing around who's been, he was dead, and he's chasing down alleyways to see if she wears red. And then once she just turns around, that's he's like an evil looking, looking uh, small well, character, that's, almost the, like a that's you know, influence. Really, yeah. really adds something to it. it yeah. It's one of the most uh, fascinating and chilling pages in in the whole of the horn god thank you yeah Yeah, no it's 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 uh, it's lovely although we mustn't forget some of those later i mean we're often talking here about uh, book one but Mm. uh, there are some wonderful moments in uh, i think it's at book four where uh uh, crom kruak uh uh, the the great worm comes Mm. for uh slough feg Mm. and uh, um yeah i think everyone rather remarked on the the way <laughs> Feg is slooped down by the worm. <laughs> I don't know if you want to say anything. Well, about it is. That. Well, it is. Well, it is all about. It, it is all about the uh, 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 you know um, fertility. So obviously, the symbol of the earthworm and everything else is, all, is the stag horns. Everything else is all going to be phallic. And I want to want to want to press that point. I did. Um, it's interesting, Pat, because. Um, I was going to say it's all about very much about Mother Earth and everything and and anything else. But you make like South Fegs like the, the god of fertility, but you made him like the more of an enemy or more of a bad guy. What was that? He's he's, he's he he's kind of um uh, he served his time and he, mm. it was time for him to move on. Really, mm. slain is the is the, the new, new yeah. uh, the the new horn god yeah. and uh, South Feg. Uh, well, he's a has been. You know. <laughs> <laughs> remember, that, remember that sequence. Yes, Sorry, go on. For grim life. You yeah, know? that is funny. That's what we laughed about, wasn't it? He was just so decrepit. And he's just, he's just, just you know, his wow, completely. That's that bit when we did that sequence when uh, Slavik is, is dancing. He's playing strumming some bone with a, with a cord across it, and he just fumbles and falls and breaks his horn, and has to strap well, it back on I again. Think you may well have suggested that. Yeah. And um, on the subject of Slavik. Uh, he's a character I have been working on his speech pattern probably since uh, episode one of, of Slain, since the very first one. And I've been gathering together this uh, unique speech pattern he has, which I'm very, very fond of because it's something very sing song and sinister about it. Mm, yeah. uh, um, the, the punchline uh, that I was always very fond of was uh, where he, he, he lists all his. He's very bombastic, and he lists all his achievements, and then he concludes by saying, am I not a candidate for fame? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, I, I, you know, I, I always think that, that that should have been, uh, uh, you know, a T-shirt slogan as much as kiss my axe. I mean, it's such a great line. You know, hey, I'm, I'm the business, guys. You know, am I not a candidate <laughs> for fame? And it's, uh, uh, I, I'm very fond of Slaufeg. Uh, it's a pity he had to go. Him. So, so uh, in, in recent sagas, I've uh, brought his son back, who you know brought his son along, who obviously is not very happy with Slain for killing his dad. So, Interesting. Uh, mm. yeah, I, 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 I'm fond of uh, family connections in stories. Mm. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> let's let's talk a little bit about the evolution of of your uh, of your working process together over the course of the four volumes, because Simon, you know, the style that you start off with gradually tightens and, and get gets more kind of immediate uh, as, 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 as the series goes on so by the end it's you're you're far more delineating lines and yeah, and, and it, filling it, in it, color like anything and like like the most purest form of life is probably an amoeba mm. a singular 
form, which people argue, no, what about intelligence? What about this and the other arms and legs and hunting, killing, love, hate? Well, that's complicated. <laughs> We're still evolving. So the purest, we'd eventually de-evolve into the purest form and to, to function. So the same with art. The thing is, I was very, very conscious of, of, of what I was doing and full of fear and wanted to get it right and anything else. And uh, so I got comfortable. And I started getting other references, uh, other artists I was looking at, like Gustav Klimt and Dore. Um and even Bill Sinkiewicz, which I was getting into, and uh, with his, uh, I forget what that female character was called, with the red. Electra. Electra, yeah. And that, that famous uh, series he did. Mm. Uh, so, and I was getting more and more, more, I was becoming more and more, more frenetic. If that's the correct word, is that right? Yes, of course it was. Quicker, speedier. Um, and towards the end, I just was getting it down to a T. Mm. So I wasn't even recognizing, I was t- missing out the detail. Plus, I was getting further and further behind. <laughs> further and further behind. So um, and further and further behind. So it was a bit a uh, bit rushed at the end, I guess. It was yeah, it was purely rushed. But then I could I learned to do that. Um, I think it's to, to the detriment of the book. Um, and I apologise for that to Pat for that. I should have I could have done a better job towards the end. Um, but I never see my my enjoyment my enjoyment never ceased never ceased. But like I said, for to for for an art any artist want to learn and it's not not digital. It's kind of um, organic art, I'd call it. Um, it's, it's there was an interesting at, yeah. period in the middle there as well, yeah, yeah, Simon, yeah. that uh, is worth mentioning, mm. um, where I think alongside that, uh, what you might call your Bill Sienkiewicz uh, influence, uh, you also at one point uh, brought in extra line work or extra detail. The scene I'm thinking of is where uh, Slain is about to behead uh, the great love of his life, Neve, mm. and that the style there is uh, a little different to book one and mm. a little different to, oh, uh, yeah. I think it yeah. would be book four that yeah. follows. Yeah. And I, I like that, but you'll probably remember at the time, um, Thad Burton, uh, I, well, he, I remember he rang me up and he said, uh, oh, Simon's changing his style. Can you have a look at it? Do you <laughs> think it's all right? Uh, do you think yeah. it's okay? And, yeah. and if it isn't, uh, would you would you mind saying something to it? And so I remember looking at it and thinking, mm-hmm. well, I mean, the whole thing with the Horn God is it's not just uh, an emotional journey mm-hmm. for uh, uh, for the hero slain. It's also a, a, an artistic journey for you. Mm-hmm. And, and therefore, I, I'm not sure I was quite this uh, coherent at the time, but I think I felt, yeah, th- th- this this works. And it's not like, for instance, if you look at some great, great uh, European uh, bon dessiné artists, and their work is fantastic, but it's it's all the same weight, and mm. that's probably what a lot of uh, readers like. Mm. But I think at the same time, it's quite exciting to think, God, what's time I'm going to come up with next week? You know, <laughs> and I think that gave mm. your stuff uh, an, an edginess, mm. you know, may, may, and an, maybe an honesty to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I'd say it, yeah. because it was it was unpredictable. Mm. Uh, and I, I recall another thing you did on occasion uh, where I think you um, you started to do that Bill Sienkiewicz thing of uh, putting objects on the on the page. I think you brought a real leaf in, didn't you, and stuck it on the page? I don't think Bill did that. I just think I just did that anyway because it's, it's quicker to stick it down rather than paint it. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's, actually, you know, it drives uh, printers mm. mad. I think I, I think they. I think they tried to. That they were furious with Bill when I think he started sticking cogs and Fur- nuts. Furious with Bill. Well, I think. I think furious one of, one, one of the Judge oh. Dread covers he did had literally had a, a, an LED light oh, uh, really? that, that that went on and off. Oh wow! Uh, on the thing, and it's like, how the hell do we <laughs> do we photograph this? <laughs> Yeah, or wrap it round a drum or whatever the hell it oh, is. Oh, that's the one, not, 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 yeah. Pat, Pat, not the drum. <laughs> it's the drum. Yeah, yeah. To like, I remember I did a lot of artwork and it was on Bristol board. It was about uh, three millimetres thick. I'd, and I remember they had to peel layers off to get it around the right. drum. The drum. Well, this this, this is what in, is interesting uh, from, from a purely practical point of view about the Horn God. So it's, it's, it's Pat, you mentioned in the, the printing processes had changed, so it was allowing... Um, Paint, fully painted artwork to be to be mass produced like this for the for the first time in British comics, mm. um, but at the same time, the people who were printing it didn't necessarily understand 
its capabilities, how it needed to be tweaked. Well, so, well, the, yeah, well what they would do, I mean, yeah. great, great, great uh, question or great, well, great statement is you find that today where you will spend a long time uh, messing around to get the right, right uh, contrast, the right colors, the right tone, etc. And it can be very complicated to get the right look because on the screen there's a light behind the artwork. So it looks nice and bright, but once you print on paper, it becomes very, very dark. Hmm. But what I'd find is that uh, Joe Schmo would would be on the, uh, the 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 tech on the uh, on the printer machine. Big cogs and levers probably then would just boof the color up, do this and do that. I don't have a clue. I don't have no clue how to adjust anything. So the art mm. could become of just very diabolical. And uh, the paper, listen to me rant. And the paper was like toilet paper in those days, you know, uh, bring a pulp quality to it, so it would abs- absorb and then and then the, the ink was slightly spread mm. a little, you know. Actually, it's interesting because I, I, I found out that with uh, digital artwork, the line, the black line, it thickens because it, it's digitized because you can't get a fine, true line. It's staggered as, as it digitally, isn't it? Mm. So I know it's my artwork because it's, you know, let's not talk about me anymore, but uh, forget that. But it's all very well. But now I think if, there, if it'd be nice if they could refine the work, uh, refine it, like they lost it before, get the work again and just re- and, and, and get it scanned again and bring it out in its real glory. Just looking to remaster it or yeah, something. Yeah, remaster it. And even have, honestly, say, well, these are pieces we couldn't get. So, yeah, I think, I think purely, purely, I think the thing is, this is, I'm not really too bothered about the whole damn thing because it's the past is gone. Hmm. So, I'm sitting here now, I'll talk about it and it's part of my life. And I think it's made me realize that well, as you get older, it's what you, you, you carry on in your life by through what you've done and you, you give. Your giving is a giving thing. Mm. So I think it's almost like the, you know, the slain become my gravestone. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? That's that's my life. There, there you are. That's Bisley. That's his work. Right. That's what he did. So it's a, that's a, kind of an epitaph kind of thing, you know? It's a... Do you know what I mean? So is it, what I'm saying, it lives, lives beyond us. And I hope Pat yeah. will agree that the same will live, you know, when he's dead. This book maybe is still going to be read by people a long, long, long time ahead, you know? Well, it's, it's I might be morbid. I might be morbid, am I? I might be deep. Uh, uh, yeah, consistently, hasn't it? Since, yeah, um, it's since, crazy. since, uh, since it first came yeah, out. It just and, won't, won't uh, die. Well, the, I'm looking yeah. forward to is I think, yeah. uh, I think I had an advanced look at uh, the Hachette edition. And, of course, uh, not surprisingly, the quality of it is amazing. It's, mm. uh, you know, it, it is that high quality edition that uh, maybe one or two of the earlier ones, I think, uh, may not be quite up to this this level We're, we'll have to have to have a look and compare but mm. uh, yeah it's pretty cool i don't mean gross is in, in it's like oh it's like something terrible <laughs> there, 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 there's you know what i'm saying is it's, it's my uh what's the word for that when when you have at least someone behind you and uh just speaks of you when you of your work i know what you're grabbing at i can't think what the word not, is not an epitaph you write an epitaph don't you obviously yeah um <laughs> Pat, what's the word when you have something that a monument to yourself? I'll stay out of this. I'll leave you guys. <laughs> I, th- I, th- I think monument's probably the, the closest monument, we're going to yeah, come monument, to. So, yeah, that, if, yeah. If, 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 you know, shut the fuck up. Shall I? <laughs> We're wasting time. Well, I am. <laughs> there's, there's, there's one, questions. For, for enough, there's, there's, there's one thing I, I did want to ask about, and, and it kind of relates to what Pat, and, and to a certain extent what you were talking about there, Simon, um, is how yeah. in collection the horn god reads pretty seamlessly like because 2080 had always because it's weekly comics it's always been very episodic you've always got to have that little um uh, uh, uh um, cliffhanger at the end of every episode mm. but with the horn god it was really the first time that it felt like something was um not necessarily being written for the trade as as some people accuse comics of being done these days mm. but more that there was an attempt to to have an ongoing story that wasn't choppy Mm. Uh, Pat, was that a, 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 an intentional thing? I think that's you? very well observed that uh, uh, that that is the case with uh, the Horn God. Um, I, I think the reason for it probably was that prior to uh, the Horn God, uh, a lot of stories were still almost uh, made up as they went along. Mm. Uh, uh, and that was often because you didn't know who, whether the artist was available or not. But in the case of the Horn God, probably uniquely amongst uh, boys' comics, no, not so much amongst girls' comics, because I would tend to work those out quite thoroughly. But certainly uh, on 2000 AD, I think it's the first one where I, I actually sat down and I wrote a full outline uh, for my own benefit a- as a guide, because there were certain things I wanted to get in, and the story was was quite complex. I mean, after all, you've got four different uh, 
uh, tribes of the earth goddess versus a bunch of bad guys, and then you've got the spirituality and the goddess and so forth. So I really had to sit down and work out the whole thing. And then having done so, uh, there was a certain element of, if you like, just literally slicing it up into weekly sections. And at the same time, you can still build in uh, enough, uh, enough action or, or, or enough uh, exciting visuals to, uh, to make that work. But you're right that often uh, 2008 stories, uh, it's almost the nature of the beast, um, have a beginning, a middle, and an end within a weekly comic. So when they're strung together, um, that can be a little intense uh, for, for a collection, especially compared to, say, let's say, a, I don't know, a Marvel story where, uh, you know, the act, you might have some long, uh, cool sequences and then you have nonstop action. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, it, it is a tough discipline, uh, the, a weekly comic. And uh, I, I think this was the first one, perhaps, that uh, said, you know, let's put the overall story first. Mm. Uh, not necessarily for um, uh, future albumization, although it was pretty obvious it would be collected. Um, and, uh, yeah, that, um, I, as you say, um, uh, occasionally certainly uh, re readers would criticize stories if they, and probably still do, if they feel they're being written for uh, a graphic novel uh, rather than for the weekly comic. So you have to give uh, a weekly satisfaction at the same time. Maybe that's why why the works so well is like Gavity because it is honest, and honesty comes through it. Um, and people like that, I think they'd really do. It's like someone who can't sing very well, but they they sing with all their heart. It's you know, it's it's they 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 they'll believe it. Mm. They like to watch people suffer, but suffer in in in, in what they do in their art, what they do. I don't think that's no, no suffering. I'm talking people like people suffering, but no, I think the honesty was there, and the and the and the excitement was there. Mm. The vibe came out from that, out without a doubt. Do it wasn't formally etic. It was very spontaneous in a way. Like Pat said, sometimes we just rode it as we went along and changed some things. Do you think this is partly the the a kind of influence of of European comics? I mean, Pat, you've already mentioned uh, uh, Bayde uh, as 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 being something that that has influenced Slain. Um, it, is that kind of more seamless storytelling? Is is that is that the point where really the European influence, rather than say the British uh, nature of the beast, came through? Um, probably. I mean, I think I've always been influenced by uh, French comics, but I, I can't think of anything, any scene in particular mm. where uh, you know I, I would trace it back to its uh, you, you know French inspiration. But what, what's fascinating, of course, about the Horn God is it had uh, a very powerful effect, uh, uh, an impact in, in France and throughout Europe. And um, so they were actually influenced in turn um, by, by Simon's artwork, uh, notably um, Olivier Ledoir. Um, and if you look at his work around that period, you, you can see strong influences of uh, uh, of the Horn God, uh, particularly in Shah, for example, and I'm sure there were other artists as well. And of course, not just uh, not just in Europe, uh, but it led to a uh, painted art revolution uh, that that followed in 2000 AD and in Toxic. And uh, um, some of it was what well, just like anything. Some of it was good, and some of it was like, oh, God, why don't you just stick to black and white? <laughs> <laughs> well, Pat, the, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Simon, this is something that I, I wanted to ask you about, about, uh, you know, this revolution. The, the, lots of people suddenly rushed in to start publishing fully painted comics. What was your feeling at the time seeing what people were trying to do? I didn't really care. I was, okay. I was more into what I was doing. Yeah, I could beat everybody, beat the damn lot. I, I didn't care then. You know, because you do, you could stop a bus. <laughs> um, ba -ba -ba -ba, da -da -da. well, I was a very, I was very annoyed at the time. Right. I mean, at the point I got annoyed and I was, what do you think they're doing and ripping me off? Da -da -da. But it's just ridiculous because you know I was heavily influenced by all these people I just mentioned, like Frazetta and Singer and anything else. So, of course, it's the the old, the old line, you know, it's the biggest compliment on in, on in, in the world, isn't it? Really, to have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it's got the point. Now I just want to give. 
give hey this is it that's how i painted and uh, I, I i love talking to people and uh, and helping people out even people uh, who are professionals now in the industry we talk and uh, tell them all the things that uh, th- try and throw them off you know right now don't you <laughs> You do like this. <laughs> oh no, you don't do that. No, no, it's terrible. No, no. Um, no, it's a game, a huge game of chess, as is life, you know. Mm. But uh, no, um, it's just all good for me. You know, it makes me live a little longer, doesn't it? In 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 the ether, somehow. <laughs> Sorry, well, I'm just talking. Like I'll drift no, off no, somewhere. no, not at all, not I'm at all. Decaf it's, it's all coffee. Good stuff. That's what it is. Decaf <laughs> coffee with no sugar in it. With a lukewarm decaf coffee you gave me. One of the things the that uh, two thousand AD. One of the things that that Matt mentions in, uh, I think, in his intro to this volume is, well, he uses the word watershed, uh, and and specifically in relation to the violence and the gore and the kind of of themes and ideas um, that that, that were in the Horn God, which, I mean, mean, Pat, you'd know this, you know, looking back at the 70s, things like action and 2000 AD and and battle were violent, but still quite sanitized. But, you know, you, you weren't getting massive blood spurts across the page and uh, the horn god would have been unthinkable even just five ten years before surely but it was up i think it was up hmm. it was well, I, I think there's there's always a rule uh which is kind of um it's a secret rule that that few will sort of own up to but if you have really beautiful art and it's gory no one's going to complain too much if it's uh, kind of nasty looking art and it's gory, then people will complain. And, and I think this is why if you look not just at uh, Simon's work, but also at Brian Bolland's work, which on occasion is quite bloody and violent, mm. and no one really complains it, uh, in either case because it's just such fabulous art. You, you think, oh no, let it go. Or at least I think that's roughly how it works. Plus we had the humour, Pat. There was a humour in it. Mm. So it made it almost a little absurd. Like, you know, we've got Slough Fegg, who's a really evil and nasty old, you know, fellow, but he's, he's got a broken horn, it's all taped together, and he's fallen to pieces, and there is humour there, and there's humour with Vaco. Um We always see the funny side of something, the irony and everything, you know. Yeah, I think when, when things are gratuitous, mm. uh, I think uh, critics will tend to home in on, on those examples, mm. and, and I think there were uh, a, a number of those in, in the comic action, which I wouldn't especially defend mm. um fingers and bones and the fingers all being but that's what it's like that's what it would be like if you, you got hit by an axe that's what it's going to look like i don't think it was glorified or glorifying violence but that's what happens yeah and yeah. you know and, your brains are your brains get smashed to pieces and that's what they're like uh so i don't think uh i don't know really what, what i could say really am i glorifying violence i suppose it is though isn't it though really if it illustrated it but, it, but it's but it's a it, mm. it's mm. <sighs> I suppose the most people say it's a more mature type of comic. It mm. was, you know, up until that point, 2000 AD had dealt with some mature themes, but mm. Horn God was one of the, the the series where, for the first time, it's not it's not pulling any punches. It's not hum- It's not using humour to ameliorate gore. It's not mm. using, uh, you know, it's not hiding things. Well, look, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Okay, well, look at those old paint masterpieces where we got uh, what's his name? Um, oh God, I should know what his name is. It was that guy, the uh, the prophet. Well, that prophet was his name. His head was on a platter. Oh, uh, J- John the Baptist. John the Baptist. You got yeah. pictures of him, uh, or, or, or head, his head being cut off and blood squirting everywhere, you know. And uh, statues of gargoyles' heads with blood coming down and dripping everywhere. Uh, and that, uh, Look at the medieval uh, illustrations. The Christ. Crucifixion. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm exactly. I'm thinking you did the crucifixion, yeah. Simon. For, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, for, for, for someone or... I, know, I did it for me. I did it for me. Or... Actually, I did the opposite as well. I did everything about Satan. So I did Paradise Lost as well. I was a balanced it as well. But yeah, I mean, uh, the cru- image is a cruci- uh, crucifixion. I mean, look at the thorns. There's an image of suffering, isn't it? Uh, but that's not gl- that's not glorifying that's suffering, is it? That's just... Uh, Mel Gibson. I mean, that's... Mm. Uh, I mean, I haven't that went too it, far. That did go too far. That was that went did go too far. That was like almost uh, almost like he was. I don't know. I think he went too far with that right. because he just almost a point. He just seemed to enjoy that to depict that suffering. I mean, how far he need to go to show he suffered? I mean, you can do it very subtly. I think that the image of him on the cross with the thorns is enough to know he's suffering. Yeah. Maybe whipped a few times going to hurt enough, but they would be, be as brutal as they were. I mean, see, it, it, actually, it, it ruined it for me because it became so ridiculous that someone would just would have died. Hmm. I mean, he would have been smashed. So the, the weapons they were hitting him were these huge giant uh, morning stars changed with huge lumps, and they would have smashed a crab at him for like half an hour. 
We would have been dead. I mean, this 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 is something. So that, it became that, silly. It became silly, yeah, right? But this is this is a theme that, oh, that, that Pat and uh, and Kevin Neal dealt with in Nemesis, like the the the, the mortification of the flesh. You know, mm. the idea mm. that you you achieve purity through yeah, suffering. Yeah. Kind this of man's prepared to suffer for what he believes in. Yeah. You know, and, and it's interesting that someone will be that dedicated to whatever he's thinking to <laughs> suffer that much, you know, and uh, people to follow him and things. So, so I think it's fascinating. So uh, there's a different dynamic there. Um, I mean, the, the, the depiction of Christ suffering, the point of that to show him suffering is because he suffered mm-hmm. and he has to be shown as suffering for our sins. You know, I'm not, I am not doing it for, I'm not Pat, trust me, I'm not, I'm not being a Bible passionate, trust me, I'm not. <laughs> I just find the, I, I did it because I find the image, in, 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 image is so interesting. Mm. To have someone across suffering so and to see that. To see the, you're not tempting me to see the film, particularly. No, I won't bother. No, I won't bother, Pat. No, it's just silly. King Arthur yesterday. I'm, oh, I'm still reeling from. No, the- no. I, I, saw, I, saw, I saw the I saw the, the trailer for it. I thought, forget about it. You know, forget about it. The trailer was enough, was it? Yeah, it was terrible. Hey, Excalibur was good, though, wasn't it? With uh, Excalibur was great. The music, the look, the feel, and the, even the helmets. Even that pig helmet with the, was was real because they used to go, the armory. They used to go quite elaborate into the armor. It wasn't pretty straightforward. There's some of the stuff but they have horns and all this kind of paraphernalia coming off it and, uh, you know, animals shaped uh, iron. Anyway, I was, well, we'll you, go, we'll, you, it reminded me that... Uh, great music. Uh, too, great at, music. The of the, at the heart of the, for, the horn god yeah. are these four weapons and uh, the one that I have very fond memories of is your depiction of the uh, uh, the spear of the sun god. Mm. Uh uh, which is like a it's like a cruise missile or something. Screaming like that. banshee oh, spear. Yeah. Oh man, it's tremendous your, your was the fun that, that was. That was just sublime. Yeah. Uh, and and it, of course, it's uh, it's also reminded me of another thing that uh, had enormous potential. And uh, you know, I mean, half the half the difficulty with weekly comics is how much space you have to explore them on on future occasions, and that mm. is. Uh, the, the TARDIS-like element of the um, of the cauldron. Mm. In other words, he enters the cauldron, and mm. it's a uh, it, it's a doorway to infinity. And uh, I, I can recall the way you did that was just uh, amazing. It, it was, you know, it had the same vibe and the same sense of wonder as the TARDIS. And uh, yeah, just thinking about it, thinking, ah, oh, so we, we, it's almost like that was it. We we just used it in a few scenes and. Uh, and then moved on to another wonder. That was a con- very conser- cons- uh, concerted effort on my part, those scenes, to depict that scene. It was a challenge. Yeah, it was a challenge because it could look so ridiculous, so corny, having a screaming face on this on this uh, spear, the spear. And, um, oh, that's, uh, with, yeah. the, with the, 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 the spear of the sun, yeah. I mean, you had to make it work, but it did work. We made it work. Um, you had to dig deep on that one. Uh, uh, yeah, it was kind of cool. Yeah, I enjoyed that. Those pages are still missing somewhere. Someone's got them in their attic somewhere. The bastards. <laughs> well, it, 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 it's kind of naturally Stolen. brought us on to to Whatever. the point of what Simon. What is your favourite moment in the Horn God? Is is there a is there a page? Is there a panel? Is there a scene that is the the the, the moment that you enjoy? Either you enjoyed doing it the most, or you look back on it with fondness now. Uh, Slav Slav Fag standing in the in the field of bones, right, holding the skull out with a straight arm. Uh, trying to look as magnificent as he possibly can. That's also a page that's been stolen. I never recovered from it. Right. Um, I think um, was there anything particular. I can't think really particularly. I enjoyed. There's so many scenes I did enjoy. I mean, uh, I mean, I didn't really enjoyed doing the one with the cauldron and him uh, um, uh, slain with his, his uh, the horn helmet, the helm, mm. standing with his with his spear, the destiny and the sword. That's and having having the chance to get slain. I mean, all the scenes are so always always exciting. I was always excited. There's never a moment, and I never thought I would, I would enjoy doing uh, headshots, but I really, really thoroughly enjoyed doing those. Yeah. I think yeah, I think the headshots. I think it was uh, I forget his name. He's having a chat. He's having a natter. I think it was Slane's father, possibly with the red ginger hair, the red hair. Oh, there's this the the the, the, the scenes. Uh, um, oh, what's her name now? Sorry, Pat, the evil woman, not Neve, the the woman. What's her name with the pink hair? The di- the the whether the, the, she's playing chess. The end. Uh, she's talking about Ma- we're talking about Maeve, aren't we? Maeve, yeah, yeah, yeah those, those scenes. Yeah, I like doing those when she kind of like, uh, you know, he, he clearly got the horn, you know, and she had him then, you know. Um, God, everything was great on that. Yeah, it was a good, it was great fun. It was great fun. <laughs> oh, thank you, Pat. Thanks for that. On the, on the subject of favorite scenes, I mm-hmm. think there's. I mean, well, like you, I have a, any number of them because I mean, it was a very intense story. But um, uh, one that comes to mind, I think we probably both enjoyed. Uh, 
for slightly different reasons, perhaps. Mm-hmm. And that's the one where it's uh, um, the, the, the everyone's saying slain, slain, king of kings. And in the background, you have Conan. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's a dig at you. Because I was a rebel. Although I did, did he love you when I did then. I just thought, I don't know how to do something. It's like someone like having you compete against his father or something or, mm. or, or his, his brother or something, you know. Is that kind of like camaraderie? I think I, I thought I knew we irritate Pat. So it was, done, it, was, it was a friendly dig. No, it was a friendly little dig. It's just a dig, you know. I, yeah. I, th- I think it's a great scene. And I think, mm. uh, you know, particularly for uh, American yeah. comic book audience who yeah. uh, are really yeah. into Conan, that... Uh, I, I hope they have uh, they share our British sense of humour there because it it is a, it is a really funny scene. Everyone's saying, "Hey, Slane, you're the greatest," and and he got and he got Den and there's the Den as well. Den's there as well. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think I think what it was really I think in a lot of ways is a mark of the characters that I mean I mean the the characters that inspired me. I think really they had to be in the audience. You know, I was inspired by Conan. I know Conan sitting there. Well, you know, maybe he's not, but he's he's the one standing there, and I'm, we're not. You know. Well, I think I'm trying to wiggle my eye. Didn't you paint me in as some kind of hippie with a? With I, a I got you. No, I, I got a dig at you and uh, you and uh, you and Glenn. I think. Yeah, had I, you I both in there in the audience there or something? Oh, okay. <laughs> I, th- I think I put myself in there a few times somewhere. It's very funny because people said, "Do you would you want to play Slain as a as a character?" And I, and I you know, it's very funny because I said at the time, "Yeah, I'd play Slain. I'd love to be Slain." But as time's gone on, I now will be his father. And now I think I'm probably his grandfather, <laughs> and I'll be quite happy to play Slav Feg now. Be honest with you. <laughs> I love to be. I play a lot of play Slav Fag. I'll do it. Hey, I'll do it for free. Let's talk a little bit about the the the, the context of the Horn God, and and uh, in particular, Pat, the the effect that this had on on uh, the ongoing series of slayings. Obviously, uh, Simon was on board for for the Horn God, but then uh, we've had a succession of artists, different uh, directions that you've taken the, the the strip, and with the time travel stuff that you mentioned, um, and and all the way through to the work you're doing with Simon Davis at the moment on the Britannia Chronicles. Um, what what was the effect of the Horn God on Slane? Because all of a sudden you got this massively popular series. I mean, that's a that's a hell of a thing to follow. God, tell me tell me about it. Tell me about it. Well, I think I, I recall at the time. I believe that uh, 2000 AD's circulation actually went up, and uh, so that gives you an idea of just how popular it was. It was reaching an audience who uh, normally wouldn't buy the comic. And my God, what a hard act to follow. And, you know, I, I, I have to say, I don't think the readers were always entirely fair there. I mean, if you think, for example, of, say, Judge Dredd, you have an amazing series by, let's say, Bolland and McMahon, like The Cursed Earth, and then uh, a, another series follows and whatever. And I, and I think for the most part, uh, you know, they're... they're um, you know, the readers, well, as far as I can recall, were fairly easygoing. But no, it's like they, they've had caviar and they want caviar from now on. <laughs> they're not, not going to settle for fish paste. Well, I, fool, well, I fooled them. I see. I did fool them. I knew I fooled them. I've had all painted, looking elaborate, and lovely, and gorgeous. They, 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 they uh, look over my bad storytelling and everything else, because they're, each artist has very much their own, their own uh, uh, say. No, your things. storytelling is very, very good, Simon. I, I know. Just, just fishing. Thank you. No, I'm, I'm I caught you. I caught you. <laughs> but, I mean, the thing, the thing was, there was a great series that followed, and I think it was well received, which was uh, Glenn Fabry's uh, uh, Boudicca yeah. uh, saga. And, um, a, a, and then there were other artists uh, subsequently who also did a, a, a great job on, on the story. But if you like, there, there was that constant comparison, especially as time went on. Uh, with Simon, and um, in other words, well, you know, we, we, we've seen the Horn God and so on, and uh, uh, and so that was that that was tricky, I think. Well, look at Lang- well, what about Langley? I mean, he put me through through me straight into the Stone Age. <laughs> uh, well, I, that well, surprised me. I thought, oh man, I can't be beaten on this. But suddenly Langley comes along, and it is absolutely check it out, guys, outstanding. Uh, I think it's digital, but it's still outstanding. Yeah, I love it. I, I've got my good friend here as well. But he's yeah, outstanding, yeah. A completely different take on it, and uh, as fresh and as new as mine was when I did mine. So, yes, yeah, it, it's a great I voice. There. I, think, I think that's the thing with Slane. It, um, for the most part, or almost 100%, mm. I think artists, you know, when they get the gig, feel, mm. right, I've really got to do something mm. here. And uh, and so, you know, they, they really travel within themselves mm. to, to find something. That's that's really going to be 
uh, re really powerful and strong. But the, mm. the reader's expectations are, are equally powerful and strong. So yeah. it is quite scary. Mm. Uh, uh, <laughs> and I think I, I think there have been one or two artists along the way um, who uh, possibly were not uh, not treated entirely well by by the readers. Although it may have been uh, that the way that the information was represented uh, by the editor at the time, mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But you know, it's an important thing point that needs to be made because you're, you're talking about artists' careers, and yeah. uh, uh, and they, there can be, a, if you like, a make or break element where Slane's concerned, and uh, it's all a bit scary, really. You know. Well, it is. We're very sensitive creatures. I mean, yeah. I mean, to, to you make are a <laughs> <laughs> We have to work with all of us, don't you? But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it make or break. It can. Uh... But what I like about Langley's is that. Uh, he still kept very much the essence, and you can see bits of everybody's in there, but it's very much his own. Yeah, um, and, and Simon and Davis too. I mean, Simon, uh, sorry, I love, I love Simon to death. He, he is, is wonderful, wonderful. And he's gone, I, I he's gone back just, more to uh, more to traditional painter style, hasn't he? Yeah, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. yeah which is I great. mean, I, mm. I think it's all been so spoiled. Uh, mm. uh, uh, you, you know, if you, if you think of uh, uh, c by comparison mm. with um, other painted artwork mm. um you know other series elsewhere i mean mm. slain really is uh, uh a, a premier series and mm. uh wow it's, it, it, it it can be a bit chilling when you you know you start a new story and thinking right okay who, who am i working with this time and uh, god are the readers gonna like him mm. and mm. blah 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 mm. it's uh yeah it's quite a lot of pressure for for all of us i guess mm. yeah. I'm, I'm i'm curious um why uh, it, it, Horn God very well received, uh, doing excellently. Simon, why did you decide to go off and do other things? Oh, be, be, because I was offered money, and, and that was my job. So I'll take anything any, anywhere, anywhere it comes from. Absolutely, and I want I want to turn job to work down. I didn't. Um, I put myself on, on, my, on my own uh, destructive force, you know, as well as my I am my own fuel. Mm. I fuel myself. I'm my own drug, as it were, and um, I mean, I, I took everything on, I, 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 and I did. But I think, like I said, uh, and I apologise to Pat about the last last uh, few issues of uh, Slain. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't wasn't great because I was under pressure with other work, and um, in the American market, uh, eventually got got my head, as it were, and uh, employed me. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, so then uh, I became a prostitute to it, I guess. Then that's when I was uh, became more. Became a little more pretentious the work then, and less and more uh, and um, yeah, less honest, I suppose, in a way. But then I enjoyed you know working with them, and I also got a chance to do do uh, some crazy shit with uh, DC with Lobo and things. I was mm. allowed a real free reign on that. Um, we me and, me and <laughs> here we go. Uh, we are going. We, I'm, are we I'm currently working on uh, um, uh, Joe Pineapples, and uh, I passed so quite quiet there. And the uh, first issue, this is official, the first one I will finish in September and one every single month after that. Okay. So this is official now. How's it, how's it actually going, Simon? Just to, just to try and pin you down there. I oh, well, I've, done, I've done the, I've, I've, uh, I've penciled up the, uh, the, the the first issue. So it's ready to go to paint. So uh, I'll send you those and you'll see them. And I think it's once you get rolling, you, you, you once you're in, you're in. It's just getting that hook in there. Well, so, that's what, I'm hoping we've hooked you. Yeah, you have uh, hooked me. Yeah, I mean, because, yeah, yeah. Uh, you probably know this, Michael. It's uh, uh, Rojors and uh, Joe Pineapples. Yep. Uh, um, marooned in space. I think I probably shouldn't say much more than that. And it's actually uh, <laughs> well, can we, can uh, originally we... based on an idea of uh, uh, of Simon's, a really great uh, story idea, and uh, can we give one thing uh, away? I ran with that. Can we give one thing away? Uh, they, uh, we, they, they can edit this out. It's not a big deal. Okay, they've been right. on this asteroid for so long. They've seen stars born and die. It's funny, eh? That's right. how long they've bloody been there. Okay, and they've been there so long. Uh, Rojors survives on eating away the uh, the, the asteroids, so getting smaller and smaller. But uh, to conserve energy, <laughs> Rojo, uh, uh, Joe just sits there in a throne that uh, that uh, Rojors has nibbled out for him. <laughs> To sit on. 
<laughs> and there's a bit, there's one scene, of, I would say the first scene is where, no, I won't tell you more than that. No, 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 that, that's enough, that, that's enough, that's, no spoilers. It's, it's very good, I mean, it's a, gr- oh, it'd be, it's a great fun, right. it's going to be great fun. And it's, uh, you know, it's totally something that I just want to do forever, forever. And forever. You, I mean, you you, you told you told me before we started recording that it, it is going to be fully painted. As we want to do like Slain did originally, yeah. Right. Uh, it won't be, it'll be honest and, and true to the, to the, to the heart, and it's going to be very, it's going to be exciting, I'm going to make it damn good, damn good. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. we talked about it for 20 years. And uh, I already got. I mean, I, th- I thought this was. Uh, part, I thought this was actually a conspiracy to get me to to the 2000 E office to kick my ass. And Fisher said, "Where the <laughs> fuck are you get it done?" Because you know, because but Pat keeps going to the all these. Shows. I keep getting okay, people, it, yeah. people keep talking to me. <laughs> so I went to the show and I met Pat. I said, "Oh yeah, what did what did Pat say?" Oh, he said, "Simon, get the fuck on with <laughs> Joe Pineapples." <laughs> Come from all over the world. He went to this show, went to that show. Yes, Pat says hi, but can he get when he can on with it? But it will be done, uh, and it'll be magnificent. Trust right. me. Excellent. Trust me. Excellent. Very happy to be working with Pat again. And again, Excellent. when we talk about the story, me and Pat just laughed yeah. continuously for an hour just talking about it, and we thought it was hilarious, didn't we? Excellent. But then we get out of business, and it gets done, and it'd be brilliant. Looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it. Well, look, guys, we are out of time, so thank you so much for chatting. It's been absolutely My fantastic. Pleasure. Thanks for bringing me down, Mike. But I want to thank Simon and Pat for joining us on the 2000 AD Thrillcast. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got some insight. And I hope you're picking up the 2000 AD Ultimate Collection. Uh, let's, as I said, it's out now. One ninety nine from all good news agents in the UK and Ireland. Go along to 2000ADcollection.com and subscribe. Take out that premium subscription because the freebies that come with that are absolutely fantastic. So until next time, Earthlets, Splendid Verthrig. <laughs>